y'all. This episode of The Read is sponsored by Target. This year, Target is celebrating Black History Month with a 100% Black-owned or design collection. You can shop must-have styles from brands like women's ready-to-wear clothing line Sammy B. There are even options for kids like Ade and I, y'all. That's African-inspired child's wear and Little Giant's giant shorties. Incredible hip-hop-inspired kids streetwear. You can snag Rayo and Honey's canvas pennants and totes, which combine black culture and positive affirming messages with a modern design aesthetic. If you're in the mood to redo your house and jazz things up in there, Domo Inc. makes wall art and home decor that celebrates the essence of black art and culture. Plus, this new assortment from Target focuses on representation across the diaspora, inclusive sizing, an expanded partnership with Black Carton Farmers, and the 2023 HBCU Design Challenge winners will have their designs featured on Target.com and in all Target stores. Hurry up and get to Target. I was just in my local Target, seeing all the cute stuff once again, picking up everything I need. Target's dedication to Black creators and founders doesn't end after Black History Month. They are committed to spending more than $2 billion with Black-owned businesses by the end of 2025. So discover the Black History Month collection only at Target now through the end of February. Shop now at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Hey, y'all. Harlem is back, as I'm sure a few of you know, because I do be looking at your little IG stories and stuff. I see what you're watching. From creator Tracy Oliver and executive producers Pharrell and Amy Poehler, the critically acclaimed comedy series is turning up the heat for a brand new season, girl. Harlem follows four stylish and driven girlfriends as they live the hilarious highs and lows of modern womanhood. It stars Megan Good, Grace Spires, the very fine Jerry Johnson, the very sexy Shanika Shonda, Everyone's sexy. Everyone in the cast mm-hmm. is pretty sexy. Absolutely. And they're joined by special guest stars Whoopi Goldberg, Laurel Howery, Sherry Shepard, and more. Get the group chat ready. We're back with a new season of Harlem. Watch now, only on Prime. Now let's start the show. Welcome back to another episode of this thing. I, I'm, I'm Jamie King. No, I'm Braxton P. Hartnabrick. <laughs> and I am Ma Rainey. This is The Re. Thanks for coming back. And I'm a black. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the Jamie Foxx show Damn is it. just <laughs> so good. <laughs> Oh, it really is. Like, actually, I was just talking today about how, I think today, about how underrated that sitcom is. Yeah. I mean, I feel like niggas know, but Absolutely. even amongst niggas. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's one of those ones where everybody watched it, but maybe you didn't keep up with all of it. But, like, you know the show, you know the characters, like, you it's know ridiculous. fancy. Like, yeah. Funny. You, you, you know it. And Jamie Foxx is just so fucking talented, but. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yes, welcome back to the show, everybody. Indeed. How are you feeling this week? Um, Things are chaotic, but I am starting to snatch back some control and, you know, taking better care of myself, that sort of thing. I haven't had a drink in almost a month, so... Work. I am... Yeah, you know, it's really... <laughs> crazy how much i was drinking so um but i'm feeling you know better in that. <laughs> i'm not you know i'm not like quitting drinking but i was i was doing too much like way 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 okay. too much and i needed to dial that's it good. back so that's good to yeah yeah it's been a nice little detox break for me and i'm starting I'm starting to feel better. So what about you? How how are things going? I'm having an intox break. Wonderful. I'm having Love a that little for you. cocktail. <laughs> no. Um, oh, just tired so much. But um, figuring it out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One day at a time. That's as best as I got, I think. And that's and more than enough. There. Exactly <laughs> that. More than good enough. Love to Trying hear it. Trying my Negro best. That's all I ask. Love you. 
Well, let's have some Black History, Black Excellence time today, this evening, this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, the Grammys took place. So let's give congratulations out first and foremost to the one and as well the only Beyonce female pop vocalist. <laughs> um, yes. Beyonce is now the most awarded artist in the history of the Grammys with 33 Grammys to her name. Woo! Crazy. That's what I I said. 33. God damn White Lies would tell you the number is 32. The answer is 33. But we'll get to that in the read. Oh, okay. Now... Um, at the award show, she was presented with four trophies for the categories of Dance Electronic Music Album, Renaissance, uh, R&B Song for Cuff It, uh, uh, Plastic Off the Sofa, received Traditional R&B Performance, mm-hmm. and Break My Soul, received Dance Electronic Recording. And everyone knows understands and will respect <laughs> that renaissance also spiritually <laughs> biblically yeah okay mm-hmm. and heavenly mm-hmm. received album of the year but again as i said we'll discuss that later okie doke <sighs> my girl i just what can you say about beyonce like, she just is that bitch. And it don't take the Grammys for her to be that bitch. And it's like the Grammys are just another notch on this incredibly long list of achievements, of accomplishments. And this woman just, she continues to outdo herself. When you are the best and you are your only competition and you still continue to reach new heights and Preach. push witches' bit wigs back every fucking time you do anything. When you're not worried about what niggas on Instagram are saying or the what your streams are looking like or beefing with people you never heard of because they won and you didn't. When you are focused on your actual artistry, on your talent, on yes. your craft, when you are doing things and putting out work that feels yeah. real to you, that feels authentic to who you are, that resonates with the people, you cannot lose. And so I'm so happy for her. Of course, you know, this is very much well deserved, but. It's just one more thing, you know? It's just one more. It's kind of like, I hope Beyonce can at least take a step back and appreciate the magnitude of some of these achievements because it kind of starts to feel like, you know, that overachieving kid. And it's like, well, damn, girl, another straight A. Like, <laughs> another... I mean, she did seem genuinely emotional when she re- when she went up on stage. She did. Her acceptance speech seemed really emotional and, and genuine and all that. So I hope she felt it, but... Mm. I mean, and with the whole fucking building standing for you, like half the girls getting up there. In the history of the Grammys, <laughs> you have won the most times. Yeah. Period. Of any like individual person. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just like you said, it. when your competition is the last thing you did or the last however many things you mm-hmm. did, you're just yep. like, how can I do something bigger, better, brighter, different? Than that, and you're not thinking about the plane. You're not yeah. thinking about the plane of the like the landscape, right? Of like whatever else is going on. Mm-mm. It is what it is. Yep. So. So yeah, extremely well deserved. Love her down deep. Also well deserved. And if you motherfucking thought it was going any other way, bitch, you were lost in the sauce. Viola Davis is an egot. <laughs> now that was wonderful. Oh my god, what a moment! I. I'm I'm only sad that she got it in the pre-show, which I get. You know, it's like best yeah. audio narration or whatever. Like I get it, mm-hmm. but when she actually went out to present, was like, "Bitch, I'm an egot," and for everybody to get up for her, and oh, I just loved it. And somebody pointed out on Twitter that she is one of 18 egots who got theirs for performing and none for producing. Right. And I said, oh, bitch, that's the real gotcha, gotcha, bitch. (laughs) actual shame. The gag is. Honey, honey. (laughs) Wait. Honey. 
Are uh, they? <laughs> Child, they said everybody is not able. Everybody Honey. cannot do it like Viola. Oh, uh, the repertoire, <laughs> darling. <laughs> it's the talent for me. Nothing wrong. No shade to producers. I get of course it. not. If you're like super hands on in a project, of course that means more. But a lot of times, you know, a certain dollar amount is enough to make you a producer, and that's enough to get you an award. I mean, I it's don't something hear a lot. else. It's something else to be the bitch who is actually being called on to show up perform for the people and be awarded like that so it's like EGOT is already a very small group and then those who got theirs from for performing an even smaller group and I just I have to stand for my the one and only I have the to one fucking stand and only <laughs> Woo! Woo! love go me some Miss Davis yes go wonderful. off Viola Davis wonderful ah congratulations Lizzo won uh, Record of the Year for about damn time, Did. which is the jammy jam. It is. Um, and she looked cute, super humble. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just stand by the fact that if you hate her, something wrong with you. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. it's like not <laughs> liking agree. music. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it's not for me, or oh, no, 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 it's not my style of whatever, whatever. Right. right. I don't, you know what I mean? But if you just like don't see it. Hmm. The talent alone that resides in that woman's person. The artistry and the way she has clearly been working on developing her craft and even talked about how, you know, she's been working on her voice, getting it stronger over the past couple of years. And she could already sing, but it's like. Right. And that was another one who got up there like, yeah, Beyonce in fifth grade, I skipped school. <laughs> because and went to your you? fucking concert. Yes, hell yeah. <laughs> But that's just like, Beyonce has been in the game for so long that other people winning Grammys are like, I just have to say that <laughs> when it was still breast milk on my breath, I stand. <laughs> and being in front of you right now, I'm in tears. <laughs> Bitch, I thanked Beyonce when I won a fucking Shorty Award. I know, Back right. in like 2000 oh, I remember that. whenever the fuck. <laughs> And she would like for what? <laughs> because if like you have the opportunity to do it, it's the right thing to fucking do. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. It is. It is that. And and Lizzo is super talented. That song is a fucking bop. It has been everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So I'm not shocked. And, and it's really good. Yeah, well deserved. Kendrick won three awards: rap album, rap song. Rap performance for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, and both rap song and performance were given to the Heart Part Five, mm. which you know everybody loves Kendrick. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing. It's like across the board, even for a lot of these white Grammy voters, if they listen to two rap songs in the past, yeah, ten years, one of them was Kendrick. He really is that fucking talented. Like Kendrick, he just, truly is. He just has it. Like this is not this is not blueface, <laughs> and like tries. Yeah. You know, <laughs> tries to do a good job. <laughs> Not like, that I to have do. like a vision, like a yeah. concept, or like you know, like an artistic trajectory. Yeah. Mm. I, I, when I listen to a lot of his stuff, I'm like, "Ooh, this is a man working through some toxic man shit." I don't know if this is for me. Like, you know, my patience with some of this is very low. But you can't deny the ability there, the lyricism, the actual oh, no, no, no. rapping talent. So. Good for Kendra. And Lizzo, not to go back to Lizzo and Beyonce, but Lizzo was at Beyonce's after party. So she yeah. won twice. <laughs> Ace down. Oh, go oh, my God. Okay, but yeah. Go, yay, Kendra. Go, Kendra. Money Long got uh, R&B performance for hours and hours, which we've heard for hours and hours and hours and hours. Mm-hmm. So, duh. Um, and deserved. And then mm. Best New Artist was given to uh, Samara Joy, who has a voice that I am obsessed with. Yeah. Obsessed yeah, with. Yeah. So I was very happy to see her win that award as well. She really has a gorgeous voice. It's 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 giving like Sarah Vaughn. It's the mm-hmm. it's she the, won like a Sarah Vaughn vocal but some was, <laughs> she won a no she literally won a an award named after Sarah Vaughn. Oh did she really I'm not making that up. Hold uh, on What? She literally did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she won the Sarah Vaughn International. 
jazz vocal something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see like a Sarah Vaughn competition. Yeah, Sarah Vaughn International Jazz Vocal Competition. She won that. Yes. Like, like wow. Of course ago. she did. Of course she did. <laughs> that girl, that's another one with an extremely um, exceptional talent. That's like oh, some obsessed. Once in a generation type thing. But I, I do have to say money long, you know, she's fine. She's fine. I don't dislike most of the music. I liked her better when she was Priscilla Renee, but you know, <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I, yes. Yes. It's true because I, it's true. And I did, but there is no way, That's fair. there is no way that hours and hours deserve that over Virgo's groove. I'm so sorry. I don't agree with it. I rebuke it. Actually, it was a popular song. Is that a better song? Certainly not a better R&B performance than Virgo's Groove. And I'm biased. Virgo's Groove was in that? Yes, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah, no, not this. Mm -mm. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) I'm so sorry. I mean, you know, happy for a black girl, I guess. Yay. You know, if Beyonce didn't win, I guess I'm glad a black girl won. But it, no. Wait a minute. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> not better than Virgo's Groove. And honestly, no shade, not even close. <laughs> Virgo's Groove is one of the most incredible pieces of music I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> I want you to understand that Virgo's Groove. I'm obsessed. <laughs> da Vinci. Yep. De, De Milo, right up there. De Michael, Mike, Michelangelo, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. art. Yep, art. Absolutely. That. Bach, yeah. Beethoven, <laughs> and Basquiat. All that, <laughs> all them niggas. Virgo's groove yeah. is a piece <laughs> with a I'm master saying. in the front. This is what I'm saying. I didn't know she was among the girlies. Yeah, she was nominated for Best R&B Performance. I do mon- like Money Long. I think that she does like the thing where she, a lot of her songs are, um, like the the hook or like the, di- the, the, the direction of the song mm-hmm. is provocative or fun or yeah. just very like quotable. Mm-hmm. But Virgo's Groove. But Virgo's Groove. This is what I'm saying. Like, I didn't even... Virgo's Groove wasn't even one of my favorites when the album first came out. And it has grown on me that much. Like, it was a good song. I remember that. Yes. Yes. I mean, and it was a good song. But over the months, it has only gotten, like, better to me. It has... And now I'm, like, fucking attached to it. Virgo's Groove is the moment of the album where you are levitating by your pelvis yes where you're literally like paranormal activity floating Mm -hmm. in the center of the room by your loins Mm -hmm. you are lifted in the air by the power of music baby baby that i don't understand how that didn't win the background vocals it does i'm sorry yours mine ours that just okay you okay that just cannot that's ugly i don't disagree so, okay. I've, I've, you don't I've disagree with yourself. <laughs> I don't ag- disagree with you saying that it's ugly because it is. Oh, okay, especially okay. compared to Virgo's groove, it's, it's it's just not. But I don't want to make it seem like I'm ganging up on this girl. Like I said, I do like her. It's not a bad You're ganging song up on her by yourself. But <laughs> <laughs> too shy, nigga. But <laughs> next to Virgo's groove, I'm just saying no. I I, I protest. <laughs> That's all. That is. That is way past fair. Yeah. Because yeah. again, again, the material. I don't even think you need to protest. I think that we just need a gavel. <laughs> oh my God, we do need gavels. <laughs> no, no, that's when the buck stops. They, oh, we can't do that. I was going to no, say, do get you know how loud out we're going to get? Eye. No, because nope. I'm thinking custom Fans gavels. Fans are enough. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm thinking custom gavels. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless T.S. Madison says, okay, I'm on... I'm, Unless she says yes, I don't give a fuck. All right. Okay, so let's move on into our pop culture segment, which we call, Oh, I want to dance with some bottoms. Mm. I want to feel the heat with some bottoms. Okay. um, 
All right, so we talked a little bit about the Grammys. Um, <clears throat> I didn't watch them. Mm. I watched uh, clips. Yeah. What did I see? I saw Beyonce's acceptance speech, Lizzo's acceptance speech, mm-hmm. a white man who I'll discuss later. Um, I saw... Oh, yes. I saw the hip-hop tribute. Yes, and what did you think about that and all the hashtag discourse? <laughs> uh, okay, well, I didn't see hashtag discourse, so you can fill me in on how that went. I thought that the um the the tribute was like a really great like when when someone with taste or like a a, a decent playlist gets the aux cord Mm -hmm. but then it starts to fizzle out like it like you you run down at the end of the playlist and you're like shit there's no more music um now what it was great like i thought i thought it was really really good really impressive a lot of really fun appearances i also was impressed on how they got everyone there on time. That's the real miracle. (laughs) The fact that all of these niggas were in place on their cue, came out, hit their marks. Mm. You know, some did choreography. I don't know what time they had to tell the girls to show up because the doll babies were on top. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was the new girlies that were the problem in being divas because truly it was the new generation of hip hop that I was confused about. Grandmaster Flash, Run DMC, LL Cool J, Salt and Peppa came out, Rakim, uh, Public Enemy, um, a Black Thought, Queen Latifah, Missy was there. Method Man mm-hmm. was fine, of course, because he's Method Man. Big Boy, Buster Rhymes, Too Short, The Locks, Nelly. Probably a couple other people I can't remember. Did I say Scarface? Uh, I, think- I think Scarface. Yeah. It was like a lot of classic yeah. hip hop icons. Yep. And then Lil Baby came out. And I was like... (laughs) Now, here's the thing. Y'all can feel how you want to feel. I don't understand why he picked that. So that was the most like... I know y'all go feel your feelings. For some of y'all, the song that Lil Baby before in that freestyle is like... You know, your national anthem, it's like a biblical hymn, and, you know, you recite it before you go to bed at night. Oh, no. And that's your business, right? It was just not meeting the energy of, like, <laughs> the rest of the of the, the, the journey. Yep. Mm-hmm. To be between the locks, and then Glorilla, who was performing on a 17, mind you. Mm-hmm. Glorilla could barely ca- catch her own breath up on herself. <laughs> like, she was performing so hard. Anyway. Energy. It it was just like, huh? And then Uzi came out and I think said two words from his song and then did the TikTok dance in front of LL Cool J. <laughs> and then the whole thing was over. It was like, what? Where were the... Yeah. Of the newer girlies. Huh. We jumped from like 98 to 2019. Mm-hmm. And there was, it was like, all in all, like, it was a two. I'd give it like an eight. 8.5. I agree. I agree. It was um, interesting. I'll say that. And I guess Questlove was one of the producers of this segment. So of course he went he was. on. Yeah, of course. And so he went on Twitter to clear some things up, um, talking about... Because, of course, people are like, well, where is such and such? Where is such and such? Why is there such a big gap in talent, like you just pointed out? And so he said, you know, first of all, a lot of niggas are already booked. A lot of these rappers are, you know, doing movies and stuff. 
if they have to shoot, they're not in LA or whatever, they can't be there. Some of them just straight up declined. And then some of them like just walked out altogether. That's what he said. And so I'm like, okay, well, clearly we don't know all this. And some of them, they're doing like a longer hip hop, like a two hour special or something that they're shooting in August. So some of them are going to be a part of that, but couldn't be a part of this. So I'm like, I get it. With trying to, like we said earlier, trying to wrangle all these famous people's schedules. Sure. And get, what is that face? No, go ahead. And get, so like trying to wrangle all these people, get them all in one place. That's one thing. And you have the constraints of television, like the time allotted and all that. The Grammys was already a four hour fucking show. But that was Kiss his explanation. The very. Yeah, no, I saw, <laughs> I saw the first part of it and then I went out <laughs> with some friends and then came home and saw the very end where they decided to just lie and, and play in our faces. Um, So, you know, as over the past few days, as I've gone back and caught up, I was like, let me let me see what the girls are saying about this, because I'm sure we all have questions. And that's what he said. That's what he said, that some people just straight up walked out. And posted that gif of Waka Flocka, you know, drinking that water, like, well, like, you know, that one. So I was like, ooh, girl. Interesting. Interesting indeed. I don't know the bigger story there, but I guess we'll see. The new girlies seem to be the function and the problem. Hmm. You know, I mean, and and there is not right, exactly, as far as like problems or friction go, but who really knows? Whatever. Who really knows? So we'll, we will see. But you know, I all things considered, right? All things considered, I think they did a decent job of of trying to get something together and um, honor this art form that has changed music so much. Yeah. So. Um. Oh, speaking of Lil Uzi Vert, for whatever I have on here, um, Meek Mill, who spoke out after DJ Drama, who was a part of the hip-hop thingamajiggy I saw. <laughs> thingamajiggy. The hip-hop tribute, 50 thingy, 50-year majig. Yep. Um, He said, DJ Drama, that uh, Uzi's single, I Just Wanna Rock, is the new uh, Philly anthem and has replaced Meek Mill's Dreams and nightmares. Wow. Interesting. I wonder how Philly niggas feel about that. I would also like to know how Philly niggas feel about that. They must disagree for reasons that... I was that... going to say, I'm going to ask Antoinette. <laughs> Meek Mill responded, I guess, on Twitter by saying, intro been lighting the world for 10 years, like shaking rooms for years. Uh, the intro True. to the album, obviously. Right. And then even Uzi said that... Um, I mean, he disagreed. Where's his message? I have the quote. Uh, let me pull it up. But basically, listen, I feel like at the end of the day, oh, here he, he said at the Grammys, I don't think so. That song been around for a very long time. And that's, that's kind of shit. And that song is still hitting it. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. And I can yeah. see his face saying it all nonchalant, doing his shrug. Yeah. <laughs> That song been around for like a very long time, and that song is still hitting exactly the same way. I'm just gonna have to see, you know, in a couple years or a decade or whatever. Um, I appreciate him being honest and being fair about it. I simply agree. Dreams and nightmares at nearly any party has the exact same reaction as it has for the past however many years. Yeah. Furthermore, when I first heard that he said this, I'm like, just what a rock is a Jersey Club song. How the fuck? A, how's a a Jersey Club song gonna be the anthem to Philly that just came out a couple of months ago. Yeah. Do you just hate Meek Mill? You mad? What's I don't. That was my first thought. Like, there is there something beneath there? Like, did he fuck your sister or something? <laughs> right. Because I do not get this at all. Have you played Dreams and Nightmare in a room full of niggas, especially Philly niggas? Something anyway. happens. Something changes. The atmosphere shifts, okay? Niggas Maybe get... Philly niggas are just tired of that song. Maybe they're they don't not, care anymore. They're not. That isn't true. Nope, nope. Just a few weeks ago, <laughs> I witnessed it my own damn self. You play that song, and them niggas are getting up and getting in each other's faces. They love it. Every word. Screaming it at each other. So, 
Yeah, I feel like it's something personal going on there that we don't know nothing about. Because why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, Unprovoked. that's exactly what I Unprovoked. <laughs> um, what else do we have here in our bag of goodies? Oh, back to Beyonce. I know <sighs> that this lady did not request that we mosey on over to her website to old full, school purchase full of shit a dot wave <laughs> file of music <laughs> to listen to her latest remix what a petty betty spaghetti <laughs> not only did she request it I did it and <laughs> didn't fucking hesitate I also did it <laughs> And gave her like my little dollar and thirty cents because that wedding remix is so good. It's great. I did not know y'all was doing it like that on TikTok. I'm gonna be honest. I had never heard it, so I feel super late. Me but, neither. Um, wow. There's a good. DJ, DJ eccentric, uh, who went viral for producing a mashup of Cuff It by Beyonce and Wetter by Twista. And I think the artist was it Blast. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but there's a rapper who I think did like a um, song uh, with the mashup. But Beyonce came out of nowhere and snatched his bald for funsies. Did. And on top of that <laughs> said, go to Beyonce.com and buy this record, <laughs> right. you fucking poor bitch. That's and, right. <laughs> and give me the rest of them goddamn tokens and doubloons for these concert tickets, you downtrodden piece of trash. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and and in, I did. And in case you had any money left, new Ivy Park, <laughs> go shop. What is wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said I had to pay to clear that sample. And so you bitches are going to go ahead and give me my dollar and 50 cents. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then go ahead and get you a, a windbreaker on your way out. <laughs> Good luck getting tickets to and my I'm show, gonna, you, you remember <laughs> You remember, sister? <laughs> and I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm Nothing you can say could turn me yeah. away. Yes, adorable. But yeah, she she just. <laughs> Beyonce, can I have anything? Like, can I just keep? No? Okay. All right. It's so good, though. Oh, it's good. This it nasty bitch. She is filthy. New ad libs, harmonies, about. new opening. Right there. Verse. Nigga, Keep on That's busting. Right. I said, oh, y'all, y'all are nasty. I mean, she's grown. She's an I adult. Mean, she said, three kids, three please, please act like Three whole you, picnic. Please act like you know how these kids got here. So, yeah, excellent, excellent. Again, that's another thing she's doing better than the rest of y'all is true remixes. Mm. Remixing the song. I miss remixes. <laughs> giving you a whole different sound, new verses. Switching up the, the song lyrics, again. like a new what version the of okay. the song. Oh, God damn. This is why I was up at 4 a.m. trying to get tickets to her goddamn concert. Like, this is why. This is the type of shit she does. I just, I cannot help but to stand. Oh. But do you regret it? Absolutely not. No. What? Because I can not always sleep. Once. Please, I can go to sleep again. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> what I need is them tickets. And I need to... Never mind. But we'll get into that later. Um, Rapper Baby Blue has been released from the, the grip of prison after he served a year behind bars for participating in a PPP loan Oh, game. I remember that. The member of Pretty Ricky was taken down to the prison after he <laughs> turned wow, himself you... in for involving himself in a $24 million fraud scheme during Ooh, COVID. Niggas. He was sentenced to 20 months, did his time, he's out. Has apparently changed his name to Big Money Blue, and I guess they're going back on tour as Pretty Girl, Ricky. No, we... Now, I feel like... <laughs> Thank you. Please say it. <laughs> Didn't they <laughs> just get your ass? 
after snatching you up off the street and putting you in the pokey yeah. for taking people's money, mm-hmm. yeah. of which I'm sure you have to return. At least some of it. <laughs> Ballsy. That's it all I'm is. saying. It it's, is. it's, I mean, I understand wanting to not go by the the moniker of baby blue yeah, it's as bad. a grown ass man. Mm-hmm. Um but big money blue, it feels like you can call yourself all kinds of things. Yeah. You know? I think we all know it's not you don't actually have big money. Cause if you did, I I don't see why you would have, you know, put yourself at risk of going to federal prison mm-hmm. behind <laughs> behind this loan bullshit. Like I don't yeah. so yeah. I mean, and change your name for what, really? I don't like, know. I don't know. One of these little reunion nostalgia is us and 30 other niggas on the ticket tours. Like, okay, you're going to do that and then what? Like, the music doesn't and, get better. And what? Is, is there an evolution of your career? Like, I don't know, baby. Maybe go find some applications. Maybe hit up a junior mm-hmm. college or learn a trade. Know. Like, it's nothing wrong with doing something else. So... It's just a you know a word of advice. Spectacular got into tacky, the richest of the ball, y'all now, ain't he? Did he? Wonderful. Yeah, he got like an app. I don't know what it does, but (laughs) (laughs) got app money. I heard it. So okay, well, good for that nigga. Yeah. God bless hell, everyone. Smokey Robinson has an album coming out. Oh God, not Gasms. What the fuck is going on? Child, Smokey Robinson said old people still be fucking and he is not going to let y'all forget. I mean, duh, we knew that. Nobody needed, like, a Gasms album. (sighs) Smokey Robinson, who was clocking in at 82 years of age out of Detroit, Michigan. I love it. I love it. Apparently, is dropping a new album, his first in nine years. It's apparently uh, slated to release in April. It is titled Gasms. I be stroking. Oh, that's what I be doing. I be so good. Um, apparently, Gasms will feature songs titled uh how you make me feel i want to know your body um you fill me up i fit in there (laughs) fucking disgusting (laughs) i fit in there (laughs) that sounds like butt stuff (laughs) smokey you fit in where (laughs) he said with a little bit of patience (laughs) and a little bit of gun oh all things are and possible. a chew that's blue, hey. <laughs> and maybe a little sniff from a bottle, and we can make anything happen. <laughs> Woo! Old people fucking, I know that's right. Go, go off, like absolutely. fine, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I just wasn't personally ready for this, and didn't need it. Me myself. Um. Apparently, Smokey said of the album, "I wanted people to be curious." You know, people will say, I got to hear that to see what he's talking about. You're right so about that. You was. are right about that. Because my interest is speaks, and I will, I, it worked. I will be listening to this just to see what Smokey Robinson is talking about. But so. also, Smokey, when you're doing shock and propaganda and all that other shit, like, you don't come out and, and admit that. And tell us that. Yeah, yeah. You don't do that. Maybe he's like, like, oh, we be fucking or something. Yeah. Oh, it's a diary of, of my life through COVID. <laughs> like, whatever, whatever you have to, whatever, I don't know. Good I luck. mean, we'll see how it sounds. It's called Gasms. And these song titles, like, it's pretty obvious. But maybe he just Gasms. felt like, I'm Smokey fucking Robinson. So really... <laughs> I can say or do whatever. My legendary status is cemented. So here you niggas go. The, the, the highly anticipated new album. Now your grandma finna get pregnant. Oh. Smokey Robinson. <laughs> oh my God. He's playing games. Imagine walking in the house. No, I won't. 
and your grandparents, they bedroom door is shut and you Young and the Restless is turned up real loud. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. I got one grandparent left. So... <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, I'm I, sure there's a market for it. And and for the people who probably wasn't going to stream a Smokey Robinson album, but now might just because this is crazy. Like, of course they will. Then, you know, a mission accomplished. He, Like he said, he was trying to get the people going. So. Roll Around is track five. Oh, my God. I mean, this, this would be nasty thing. coming from anybody. I think we just... That's died. what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> want just... to hear this from fucking Lucky Day. I don't care who it is. Right. Right. So. um, Chris Brown went off on Robert Glasper for no <sighs> apparent high-ass reason and then apologized. Actually, I don't care. Do you care? I mean, it was part of my read, but... Okay, we can save it. So we can talk about it then, yeah, because this was just so fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> this was so goddamn stupid, but it can wait. Um, so there are rumors that Lotto is dating 21 Savage. Okay. <sighs> um, she got a tattoo. Above her ear or like behind her ear or something that it happens to also be the nigga's name. Oh, oh, I did see that. What's his name? Shaya? Shaya or something? Yeah. S H the Beyonce E Y A A. <laughs> you know, the E with the tilde. That is, or we, that thing you're is exactly right. You, it is the Beyonce E, correct. Mm-hmm. Um, that's his name, and apparently she got it tattooed right behind her ear. And, you know, people are going with all these mixy rumors about the two of them dating, although um, 2121 has uh, denied having a girlfriend or a famous girlfriend a few times. So maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. I I think she's talked about being in a relationship before or like that she's dating. Maybe she just said that she's not paying no bills right now, like an, alluded to mm-hmm. having a rich nigga or something like that. When I heard this, I just thought of when Ambrose talked about how, didn't she say she um, introduced him to like water and vegetables? Bathing, yeah. Basic hygiene. A washcloth, and- yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that was a few years ago. Maybe he, he showers on his own now and, you know, oh, ho- hopefully so. Project. Oh, don't say that. Oh, God. I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah, you're not lying. But the first thing I noticed was that she got this tattooed in red ink and she's super light skinned. <laughs> and I'm not entirely mm. sure how this works, but I have a feeling that red ink, like if you do tattoo or move, I have a feeling the laser will pick it up and get rid of it much faster than if it's a darker ink. A tattoo artist can let me know if that's true. But oh. something like this, I feel like you know, if, they, if they break up, she could probably get that taken off in a month or less. Maybe. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. So, you know, maybe, maybe. But I see that's not the only red tattoo she has either. Mm-mm. So who really knows? But, you know, if this is true, then good for them, I guess. You know, they cute together or whatever. That nigga. Whatever. I just keep thinking, it's a knife. <laughs> yeah, like... That was I, so funny. <laughs> but I also secretly... Like, I also think that he secretly speaks like Stewie Griffin because, you know, he's British. Oh, oh, that's right, he is. Oh, so um, he want his papers. <laughs> maybe. Well, either way. I mean, y'all. good luck and God bless Yeah, everybody. good for y'all. Involved. Right. Um, And then there are rumors that Quavo and Offset were fighting down to the <gasps> Grammys. Yes. This was so crazy. Now, Quavo uh, was a part of uh, the memoriam, in memoriam performance where they tr- he was part of a tribute to uh, Take Off, who passed late last year, mm-hmm. uh, who was murdered, more specifically. Right. Um, 
But there were also, there were these reports that Offset was asked to participate in it, which I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, But that Quavo, like, stepped in and blocked the request or stopped it from taking place or something like that. And that bit of information is being linked to these stories that uh, the two of them were then fighting backstage. Now, there is no uh, concrete evidence of a fight. Offset tweeted something afterwards, like, what I look like fighting my brother, y'all crazy, something like that. Like, yeah implying that it wasn't true, I guess. But then there's also some video footage of what is most definitely Cardi mm-hmm. backstage at the Grammys <laughs> yelling, both of y'all wrong, both of y'all wrong, this ain't right, stop it, and telling somebody to shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, no word or receipt on what exactly happened or why. There was also a clip I saw of of Offset and uh, Pierre from Quality Control and him being pissed off. Talk about something. Some, talk about something that pissed him off. Oh, good know. grief. <laughs> but I think it was last week when I heard about Quavo doing a tribute for Takeoff. Mm-hmm. I said, like, Good energy, go with you. God bless. I don't even know how you're gonna muster the strength to do mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um. So, I hate to think that they actually were back there fighting, but at the same time, I understand that emotions are high. Mm-hmm. They were not all on good terms, unfortunately. After or you know when takeoff died, and it sucks. I believe that they'll get on the same page eventually. And get back to where they need to be, especially since they are family. Right. Um, but it sucks that there's possibly drama um, that is not only taking place, but publicly taking place mm-hmm. in the midst of grieving. Um, these are still people. Like, we can say whatever we want to, but yeah, I wouldn't want to be involved in some shit like that when I'm dealing with the loss of someone yes. close to me at the same time. Exactly that. I felt like, I don't know, you can't really tell from the video of like Cardi yelling, like you don't get to see anything, like you just hear her hollering. So I don't know. I For for Offset to get on Twitter and be like, me fighting my brother, you niggas are crazy. That just leads me to believe that they if he's telling the truth, then maybe he means they didn't have like a physical fight, but they was arguing and getting into it. And mm-hmm. Cardi was like, nah, y'all niggas need to calm down. So, but that's, you know, if he's telling the truth and I be, I have a tendency to want to believe that people are, but either way, it's sad because like, if something like what happened to take off was to happen to either one of them, it would just drive the point home even more how like, how bullshit sometimes stacks up and then people really are like rightfully in their feelings and then it just like adds up and adds up and then before you know it everything is out of control and people who are family who you know should be able to be super close and and talk about things and settle differences and stuff you get to these situations where y'all are beefing and now something tragic has happened so I hope that they are able to to work it out. Shout out to Cardi because when E.T. or Access Hollywood or whoever, when they caught up with yeah, her backstage, that was funny. They was like, oh, we heard you back here getting something together. She was like, I ain't getting nothing together but my outfit. <laughs> you know how she right. do. <laughs> so, uh, She's shout getting out to her. better. Remember what Cardi yeah. would respond to every single thing? Would, would. And with all of this shit, the fact that she's not arguing with y'all on her Instagram stories or going live. Oh, God. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Oh, my God. Cardi would go live at like 1230 in the morning and be in the bed with culture laying next to her, eating nacho covered flaming hot Cheetos (laughs) and would argue with you niggas with her eight inch long nails. So I am I don't know if it's media training or what, but 
I'm glad that she is not going back and forth with y'all over something that is so sensitive and so personal. These are just human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. So. That's it. That's all I got for high tops this week. Woo, that was a lot of tops. We're just how I like it. <laughs> uh, that's it for that. And then we're going to take a break and then do letters. Hey, y'all, listen, you may not have known this, but there are several industries that are heading for a hiring boom this spring, like e-commerce and healthcare. Surprisingly, hospitality is one of the areas with the most growth. The hospitality industry needs to hire for service positions, managerial positions, and back office operations positions as well. If you need to hire qualified candidates ASAP for any of these industries or any other industry you need, ZipRecruiter is right for you. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash read. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful matching technology to find the most qualified candidates for a wide range of roles because you got stuff to do. You got places to see and things to eat. Okay? And so you need a little bit of help sometimes, some time to be saved and at a place that you can trust to do the things. Plus, ZipRecruiter offers attention-grabbing labels like urgent, uh, training provided, remote, and more that speak to job flexibility. Okay, we've even used ZipRecruiter ourselves to find help for this podcast and other things we've got going on behind the scenes. So let ZipRecruiter keep your team growing strong no matter what the industry. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself by going to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. It's ZipRecruiter.com slash read. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash R-E-A-D. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Let's get back to the show. Okay, folks, we're back, and it's time for the listener letters. Yes, the listener letters this week are brought to you by Target, who again is celebrating Black History Month with a 100% Black-owned or designed collection featuring styles from brands like Sammy B, Ariane Ayo, Rayo and Honey, the winners of Target's 2023 HBCU Design Challenge, who come from, you know, little schools you may have heard of, like Spelman College, Albany State University, and Norfolk State University. Plus, Target's exclusive Black History Month assortment is focusing on representation for all of us Blacks. That's right, across the world, across the diaspora, different cultures, different countries, still Black. Inclusive sizing and an expanded partnership with Black Cotton Farmers. And we are partnering with Target to bring you exclusive content celebrating Black excellence. We'll see just how excellent these letters are here in just a moment. But we are going to get started this week with an update from Myla. So Myla emailed us a while back because she was stressed out over her boyfriend playing daddy to a kid that he raised but wasn't his. Remember this? It was like his ex-girlfriend's baby, but not his Bigly. baby. And yeah, he stayed so. in the little girl's life. And Milo was like, how do I tell him to leave this child alone? And we were like, girl, chill. So Milo said, I wanted to, I want to start by saying thank you for the sound advice you two gave me for my letter. When Crystal suggested the option of adoption, to my surprise, that idea sat better in my spirit, even more so than him outright severing ties. I had just never thought of that as a possibility before. When I sat with myself and thought about what him adopting the child and actually becoming her legal father would mean for me, it brought me more peace because at that point it would make everything make sense and I would want him to be a part of his child's life. I had well, a conversation. So nice. Right? I had a conversation with my boyfriend telling him how the current circumstance of being on the fence was affecting me and how I felt like he should shit or get off the pot like y'all see it. <laughs> I then suggested the idea of adoption and told him how I thought about it and would be supportive. And he looked at me like I was crazy and said he wouldn't want to do that because he was worried about her putting him on child support if he was legally obligated to this kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a left turn. But I told him it's either that or you sever ties because you, you know, the idea of your ex calling you to take care of a child that you have no legal or biological obligation to does not sit well with me. I'm tired of hearing you complain about it. And what if one day she decides to cut you off because she meets a new man? You would feel used and heartbroken. A few days passed and he brought it to me again, saying that he had been thinking about it and had a change of heart. So if the mother and the little girl were OK with him doing so, then he would love to adopt her. This took me by surprise, but I was on board. He called the mom the next day and put her on speakerphone so I could hear. He asked her how she would feel about him adopting the little girl, and she laughed at first. But after realizing he was serious, she said the only way she would feel comfortable with him adopting her is if he decided to come back so they could be an actual family. Ah, uh, girl. Girl. <laughs> 
girl. They went the back truth and forth. emerges listen, from listen, the shadows. Okay. They went back and forth a bit and things slightly escalated. She accused him of only wanting to claim the kid on his taxes with his broke ass. Like she not the one always asking for money and finally said that she just won't call him anymore since oh. it bothers him so much and that he will no longer be needed. I could see that that comment got to him, but he held it together and asked if he could say goodbye to the little girl one last time. And she thankfully agreed. She then just said, make sure you don't bring that bitch with you. Of course, I did go with him to the meetup, but I Period. stayed. Period. The fuck? <laughs> right. Fuck but are you I, talking about? But I stayed in the car so as not to cause drama. He and the little girl sat on the park bench and talked for about 15 minutes, hugged for a while, and then he walked back to the car. I could see he wanted to cry and that really broke my heart. He told me that he told her he would always love her and consider her like his own. And when she got a little older and wanted to reach out to him, he would always be there for her. He even recorded a video of him saying that to her for his memories and played it for me. And we both cried on the way back home. It's been about three weeks and the mama still has not called. I've heard him play the video back to back a few times since then, but he seems to be coming along. We talked about it and he told me that now it's done. He feels much better because he does not want to have to deal with the mom for the rest of his life. And it brings him mm-hmm. peace to know that the little girl knows he loves her and that he didn't abandon her and she'll always yeah. be welcomed by him. Hopefully she does reach out later and they can have a relationship on their own terms without the mother being directly involved. So all in all, it yeah. worked out and I get to keep my man. Thanks for your help, Myla. <laughs> you know something? <laughs> That last line ruined it for me. Because I'm Damn. just like, it was She's, just this like long, emo- like they, that was like some real shit. Yeah. And I think that you did the right thing in helping him do the right thing, mm-hmm. which was just allow this child to understand that they are loved by by this person who mm-hmm. was going to be available to them in their life yeah. while at the same time distancing yes. yourself from the mother mm-hmm. of this child who seems to only be involving, who's con- absolutely involving you in her life for ulterior selfish ass, ulterior yeah. selfish ass moment, motives. Mm-hmm. So it's like... Yay for that. But at the same time, this baby just lost his father figure and you're like, well, I got my man. Yep. <laughs> and I actually, I actually. Like what? To, I had to edit this update <laughs> because it is long. But also there was like a whole additional paragraph about how, you know, even if he did adopt this little girl, at least if they had a baby together, it would be his first biological kid, so she wouldn't have to be in her feelings. And I'm like, okay, you still got some shit to work through, Myla. Like, like that's how you it sounds definitely, to me. you definitely still have some shit to work through. But I am glad that he now understands that he was not actually that child's father, as far as the mother was concerned. Yes, he was a way was for her to get some Uber and lunch money when she needed it. She did not consider him to actually be a father figure. And now it's all out there. And I mean, like I said, when that's not your baby, it is nothing you can do. So I'm glad that he said something. He got the chance to talk to her and that it all worked out as as well as it possibly could have, considering that the mama was going to act like that. So um, I said, wow, look at us actually helping people. (laughs) Look at us actually helping people with their lives. So uh, thanks, Myla. If you have uh, submitted a letter and you have an update for us, please send that in. We'd love to hear you or hear from you, I should say. Our first actual letter this week comes from Kirby, who says, Hey, Crystal and Kid Fury, I've loved the show since 2017. Hope you're both doing well. I'm a black gay man who's about to turn 27, and my boyfriend and I have been dating for six years. We talk about marriage sometimes, but deep down it makes me uncomfortable. I have no clue what a successful marriage looks like in my life, and I have nowhere to go for safe guidance. I heard an expression that basically said people who can't imagine themselves being secure in life could never let themselves be secure with someone else. Have y'all heard that before? Do you agree? Do y'all think it's normal to have these feelings with someone you love but haven't tied the knot with yet? I know Crystal cringes at this type of lovey-dovey bullshit and neither one of y'all are married, but I'm scared to talk about this to my friends and I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to talk about it in therapy. Thanks for your advice, Kirby. What's the saying? 
Uh, people who can't imagine themselves being secure in life could never let themselves be secure with someone else. I guess that makes sense. I've never heard that before, but... Me neither. I'm, I'm not inclined to agree with absolute statements, so... That's, that's true. I would say off top, no, I don't agree with that because I'm sure there is somebody who can't imagine being secure in this life, either emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, who could easily partner with somebody else. It's, that's not me, but <laughs> I'm sure that person exists. Um, and there probably is some truth in it, like... For a lot of people working through whatever issues you have with feeling secure in your life or within yourself are probably going to spill over to your relationship. So, but yeah, what do you think? Is it normal to have these? Uh, oh, God, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, I don't know. It's. He's only 27, so, and they've been dating for six years. I mean, I guess. What is the saying again? I kind of, people who can't imagine themselves being secure in life could never let themselves be secure with someone else. I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, just like, I, I don't like to make blanket statements yeah. or just agree on on absolute state like you said yeah i think i don't know when you're that fucking young and you've been together for that long it's kind of like to have these feelings of not being sure about marriage is extremely common it makes common. a lot of, right I don't think you know it's abnormal for you to have these feelings you're very young like, you literally just got done developing. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense to have some hesitation around marriage or be unsure about it. And even if you do know what a successful marriage looks like, even if everybody around you is in a successful marriage, you can still be nervous about taking that step for yourself because it's a big fucking leap. That just sounds like one of them fucking social media quotes that just it do. Like, Ooh, damn it do. I'm gonna fuck him up with this one <laughs> and I'm just like what we, nobody needed that yeah especially because like a lot of people who are secure in life are not secure with others so right. it just it doesn't it just doesn't again the universal once you make it like oh they could never do this or they always do that it's like automatically you're wrong almost every time. Again, almost <laughs> every time. Her. Like you're just, it doesn't work like that. So uh, you said you're not quite sure if you're ready to talk about it in therapy. I would highly suggest that you do though. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, the things that make you uncomfortable are sometimes the topics that need to be talked about in therapy. Preach. It's true. Because that's where the growth happens. But... Um, I wouldn't take this quote that you probably saw on some Instagram therapist <laughs> story and apply it to your life like, oh, I don't feel secure in life, so I can't be secure with this man. It could just be I've been with this nigga since I was 20 years old and I don't know if like I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. Like this is an extremely serious relationship. You're very young. A lot of it could be is this really is marriage really what I want? Is that really where I am? Like. Do I want to date other people? How much more are we going to grow up over the next, over the course of our fucking lives? Like, it's a lot of questions to ask when you're talking about getting married that young. So I don't think that's it. I think there's a lot of other stuff going on there. But again, I would highly recommend uh, talking to your, your therapist and your friends about it, actually being like, oh, child, like I've been with this man for a long time and I really love him. We've been living together for five years and that's great, but I just don't know about you know, marriage, because I'm sure you're not the only one your age mm. or in your friend group who is, you know, struggling with that. So definitely not. Yeah. Um, but good. Anything else for Kirby from you before we move on to our last letter? No, I feel like that checks my boxes. OK, well, good luck, Kirby. Um, and let us know how those conversation go. Conversations go. 
Our last letter comes from Heated, who says, Hey, y'all, I'm a 24-year-old grad student who adores the queen. As everyone waited in anticipation for the access codes, I was one of the many not chosen on that fateful Monday. So dramatic. Oh, <laughs> when my best friend Tay called me, I told her I was stressed out about not yet receiving an access code. And she said, yeah, how are you going to send me a text with no access code? I was confused and told her that that don't sound right and asked her what did the text actually say. She reread the message and screamed, oh, my fucking God, I do not read. Come to find out this girl was sent the link to join the queue with the access code two whole hours earlier. She did join the queue and told me about all the prices, but she never offered to add me to her purchase. She got some nosebleed, nosebleed seats. And while we were talking, I kept dropping hints, like telling her I was willing to spend up to $600 or so on this concert. But she didn't pick up on it at all and checked out with just one ticket. Ouch. I instinctively said, well, I'll just wait for Friday with the hopes that I can purchase, purchase tickets with my sisters and mom, which is true. But damn, a bitch would have at least loved a lifeline offer. It's fucking Beyonce. 15 minutes after she purchased, Ticketmaster announced that no more codes would be sent out and sales were closed for Group A. When she got home, she told her mother, who is also a stan, that she had gotten her ticket and her mama was stunned. Asked her who she was going with and why she only bought one damn ticket. Of course, she said because of funds, but damn, not even your mama who you know would have sent the money. This girl even had the nerve to say to me, I hope I'm next to somebody that's lit. <laughs> girl, no. My question is, would I be wrong or petty if I ended our friendship because of this? Tay knows that I love <laughs> Beyonce. She's practically a sister to me. The principle to me was that what she did was selfish and self-centered. We had a conversation about this tendency two years ago when she left me drunk at a party without saying anything to go be with a nigga. And I forgave her. But this whole ticket anxiety has me questioning our relationship and her consideration for others when major things happen. I know my friend can be absent minded sometimes. And because since she grew up as an only child with undiagnosed ADHD, but this seems inexcusable since I was right there. Thanks in advance. I love you guys. I am also amongst the percentage of kids who grew up listening to you. May more blessings come your way. Excuse Thanks, me. Miss Heated. I mean, she's 24. The show is 10 years old. So that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> So, but thanks, Miss Heated. I mean, do I think it's something to end your friendship over? Not necessarily. But do I think it's something to have a real conversation about? Yes. Especially when you're adding in, oh, she left me for a nigga. And I actually have, like, mm -hmm. beef with her in general yeah. around this same sort of subject. It sounds like you need to talk. Like, I completely understand Beyonce tickets or lack thereof be, being the breaking point, um, you know, <laughs> to which you feel like you need to have a conversation. But I wouldn't automatically, like, automatically um, nix my friendship with someone because they didn't offer Beyonce tickets. But I would want to uh, have an understanding of why you would disrespect mm -hmm. me to my face like that, knowing that I am a huge Beyonce fan and supporter who must be at this show, uh, who is also like a sibling to you that we have to have a conversation about, but automatically, um, writing you off. I understand, you know, anxiety is high. Yeah, you don't it have is. a ticket yet. It You're still is. waiting. I get it. But, um, I think in the end you can fix this if you can <laughs> fix it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yes, I honestly, my first thought would be it's really fucked up that somebody who don't even read the whole text message, somebody who didn't even read the whole text message got an access code and I did not. Like, I would be pissed about that yeah, off top. Bad. Why did I have to tell you to read the whole fucking thing? Like, clearly, you don't, you don't deserve this. You don't mm -hmm. care the way I care. I, so I would have been pissed at that. But also, just to be fair, Miss Heated, you was on the phone with her while she was looking up tickets and all this. And at no point did you say, bitch, get to. Like you said, you dropped a bunch of hints and was like, oh, yeah, I'm willing to spend so much money on this show. Just straight up say it. Straight up yeah. say, bitch, I want to go. I can't believe you have an access code. I will cash out Zelle, Venmo. I'll drive it over to your house right now. 
but get me a fucking ticket or I'll give you my card number and you can check out with my shit. Like (laughs) whatever we got to do to make this happen, I need to be at that show. So I get it, especially when it's somebody that you've been best friends with since middle school. It's kind of like, why would I need to say that? But also, why wouldn't you say it? Yeah. I feel like that kind of goes both ways. So I also I don't think this is worth necessarily ending the friendship, but I would be extremely frustrated. I would. I really would. And it's it's more to do with the fact that you got access and I didn't. Why you? Yeah. Why you? <laughs> but I also agree with you in the sense of how frustrating can I be if I didn't open my mouth and say, bitch. Yeah. Get a ticket for me too. Right. Let this be a lesson. Yeah. Don't don't trust that people are gonna pick up what you're putting down. And just open your mouth and say what it is that you want and need. Outright. That's a concert. It's not the time for it. Baby, it's it's not the time to be coy. The last thing I'm going to do, if I'm on the the phone with somebody who has a pre-sale code, bitch, get me a ticket. Change that search from one to two. And Mm. let's fucking go. (laughs) Ain't no way I would have played around about that. So... Yeah, girl, I think this is a lesson for both of you. Hopefully you can still get some in the general sale or where the resellers are going to calm their fucking pussies down. But again, we'll get to that. Hopefully you can go anyway. But yeah, I think this is a this is an opportunity to learn for the both of you. So best of luck, sister. Um, hope you can make it to the show. Let us know how it goes. That is going to wrap up. The letters for this week. If you have a question for us, send it to asktheread at gmail.com. Thank you again to Target for sponsoring the letters this week. We're thrilled to share that Target is committed to spending more than $2 billion with Black-owned businesses by the end of 2025. So learn more about how Target supports Black communities from investing in the next generation of HBCU talent to making it easy to shop Black-owned brands year-round. Visit Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, are you thinking that maybe seeking a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful to you, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet up with them or afford them? Well, then you can try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours hours. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session, which I personally find incredibly useful. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, and much more. Plus, Talkspace is affordable and in network with most major insurers. I've definitely, like I said before, used Talkspace in between sessions with my main therapist, my regular, regular therapist, or in moments where I've just been in crisis. And it's incredibly helpful and affordable, like I said. As a listener of the podcast, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash read. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash read to get $100 off your first month and show support for the show. That's Talkspace dot com slash read now let's move on this episode of the read is also brought to you by state farm sometimes people can get a little bit too personal with us you know like maybe your boss is venting to you about their spouse or their kids or your cousin's girlfriend's babysitter is showing you pictures and videos of that weird oozing growth that they have on their back like okay you know there is a such thing as getting too personal, but not with insurance. With State Farm, your insurance works for you, giving you options through personalization that meets your needs. With the State Farm Personal Price Plan, you get the coverage you want and need through a policy that helps cover what's important to you, all at a great rate that you can afford. So again, you don't need to get that personal. Please keep your body parts to yourself, okay? Don't share that with me. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Go get a great rate with State Farm. And let's wrap up the show. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. It is time now for the read. It is. Okay, so I just want to say... A few things, two things. 
First things first. I don't know whose idea it was to have Grammy voters speak to folks over somebody over at Variety. Alan Light is who whose name is underneath oh, this yes. article. But basically what happened is uh, they spoke with some of the voters, some of the voters from the Grammys, let me see how many, five voters exactly, about who they voted for in the categories of Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. And why? Um, the five voters were a music manager who's been a Grammy voter for 15 plus years, a Grammy winning producer engineer who's been a voter for almost 20 years, a 20 something producer voting for the first time, a music business veteran in his seventies and a 30 something female singer voting for the second time. These are all quotes from variety.com. Now, what became apparent in uh, the information provided by these voters is that a lot of folks uh, placing votes in the ballot for the Grammys are some hating ass, fraudulent ass bitches. Mm -hmm. Facts. Now, Beyonce's Renaissance is album of the year. Suck it. Like, that's just, it is what it is. Um, the cultural movement shift mm -hmm. embodiment that took place uh, within the release of that piece of work is undeniable. The girls know exactly what time it is. The girls go up on stage. They see that Beyonce's in the building. They bow down. It is what it is. Like, stay pissed. Um, but more than two of these niggas basically said that they didn't vote for Beyonce because she has won too many times. Um, I saw some people direct similar energy to Adele. Uh, mm. But it was Beyonce that many times got this information. And honestly, the whole thing was foolish to me. It's not even just like, okay, all right. The fact that so many of them were like, I don't even know who most of these people are. I haven't heard any of their music. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. To me, the 70 year old, or yeah, the person in their 70s, the music business veteran, literally said, um, it's a lot of work to listen to all of it. I guess I'm a bad voter because I didn't do my, my diligence, but that's my right. And of course, of course, this person voted for Abba in damn near every category possible. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Which, and that's no shade, Abba's great. But for y'all to not even take the time to go ahead and listen to the music of these people, do some research before you vote, to me, is janky in itself. But then to be like, this person has won too many times, so I'm going to invalidate the entire definition and meaning of the motherfucking category because I don't want them to win another award. What's the point of the establishment, Thank you. bitch? Why are we here? People being like, well, I didn't really listen to anything else, but I really like Coldplay, so I voted for them. The number of people who were like, this album of theirs, of blanks, wasn't their best or wasn't very good, but I like them. Or they haven't won anything, so I wanted them to, or whatever. Versus, here's the choice. Here are the choices. Here's the category. This choice belongs to this category. Like, the circle goes in the circle, the square goes in the square, the triangle goes <laughs> in the triangle. You bitches want to play games. <sighs> the fact that it really is exactly what we're talking about. Salty ass, mad ass, bitter ass, weird ass, contrarian ass, hating ass bitches playing games. Give the people their things. 
One motherfucker said he ain't vote for Harry Styles because he comes from a boy band and I never took those acts seriously. What are y'all doing? Besides lines. <laughs> Ooh. It's just, it's so weird. It really is. And that's why it doesn't shock me that Beyonce goes, scoops up her awards and, and leaves. Shows up late, punches it when she's done <laughs> and goes on about her business because at this point, all of it has transcended whatever your your trophy is and whatever you're like, we know what's up. Your yeah. faves know what's up. Yeah. Even the motherfucker who won album of the year decided, let me not spend more than 10, 10 fucking seconds up on this stage. They said his name for album of the year and he immediately heard the buzzing and said, how quickly <laughs> can I get the fuck? Somebody actually hollered out, Beyonce! <laughs> like, you knew. We all knew. But yeah. And to that I say, Harrison Styles. <sighs> Listen. You won your award, good for you. For you to go up there and say. <laughs> and I mean, he said what? Two sentences? Three? It wasn't much. And of those sentences, you used one to say that this doesn't happen to people like you? Somebody fill me in. One of you girls listen to the direction. So, people like Homst. Was that not a white man that went up on that stage? I mean, I, I thought so. I thought so. Was that not a straight white man that went up on the stage? Am I missing something? I, mean, I know he's worn like a gown or two or something and been like, ooh, look at me, androgyny. But like... I don't think he's ever come out, if that's what you're asking. If he is gay, I don't think he's ever actually said it. So... And even if he isn't, even if he is... Sam Smith White gay man have won Grammys. <laughs> Sam, Sam Smith just won, like, an hour before that. So, clearly, gay Who? white men, it happens to gay what? white men, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> of all of the things for you to have gone up there and said after you stole this black woman's goddamn Grammy from her. Now. <laughs> after her award was pilfered. <laughs> you decided to go up there and say that winning doesn't happen to people like you i'd love for some for 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 elaboration i would just love for more information on this because I was he once of- poor I cut because the TV even off. then <laughs> i got the tv off <laughs> you are bullshit Beyonce posted her Grammys before the show was over, so I already knew they were about to play games. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. But what? All y'all get out of my goddamn face! Y'all are gonna y'all are gonna stop playing in the faces of black people during Black History Month with this bullshit talking about you not giving people their goddamn awards because they win too many times. First of all, y'all have been hating that hard for years Mm -hmm. and it shows and she's still the most decorated at your motherfucking ceremony. So like to that extent, you must then at some point look outside of your own hating ass goggles and assess the situation for what it is. Maybe this nigga continues to win this many times because this motherfucker is pushing the envelope and expanding what they do outside of the norm, outside of what's expected, outside of what's delivered, bitch. Maybe the award is deserved. But you don't want to do that. You're literally not only hating when you cast your vote, you're proudly reporting that you're a hater, bitch. What is the point then? Because you motherfuckers would love For not only the industry, but for the consumer outside who's just watching with their Dunkin' Donuts or whatever, Dunkin' Donuts, who's just sitting at home (laughs) watching to continue to suck the teat 
of the Grammy Awards and bow down at, 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 as yeah. if it's supposed to be this the most reputable, most respected award in in music. But y'all back here playing the games, talking about, well, you know, at the end of the day, I don't understand why we should quake in every time we should be quaking in our shoes every time Beyonce releases a thing like it's a major event. Literally what they're saying. Child. Like they're mad at her fans. Yeah, I bet you won't say what your motherfucking name is. I bet you will go by voter number four, you piss poor ragged bald <laughs> bitch. <laughs> And as I said, it's not just Beyonce. The sentiment across the board is just so very, like, like high school. Which isn't, it shouldn't be shocking. But it is what it is. Y'all are weird. Harry Styles, of of the things you so could have weird. said when you went up there, girl. This was the Try one. again, my dear. And I'm done. I don't have anything else. That was so bad. I just have to say, like... I really sat there trying to think about which identity of Harry Styles is is like oppressed. Does Harry Styles feel like he's being systemically discriminated against? It really blew like the the way that they played in Beyonce's face. They have done this before in this same category. So I really wasn't even shocked about that, especially when she posted on Instagram during the show. I was like, OK, we all know what's up. So I already knew that was going to happen. But for him to get up there and be like, yeah, you know, just shout out to the little guy, you know, shout out to the guys like me. It just never happens for us. And finally, one of us made it. I'm like, which which identity is that? I, I would, know what he's I would about. love to know which identity of yours is shut out of the Grammys. Because, again, even homosexuals get awarded. I so, said maybe he's from Krypton. Maybe this <laughs> thing is from like... <laughs> Yeah, maybe he's from Zathura or whatever. Oh, I don't know. Just didn't make no fucking sense, though. Way to be irritating. Like, girl, just take your award and go. Just take it and go. I thought it was so funny how Trevor Noah was like, let me back up and find that white stand because I'm not saying this out loud. Like, I get that he probably would have did that regardless of the winner, but I felt like if it was Beyonce, he would have wanted to, like, say it at the same time. Of course. <laughs> But he was like, oh, no, you can you go ahead because I don't I don't even want to say this out loud. This don't even look right. So, yeah, the Grammys were um, entertaining and also a mess. And Christopher Brown decided to insert himself directly into that mess by posting on Instagram a screenshot of the Google search results for Robert Glasper and writing y'all playing who the fuck is this i'm gonna keep kicking y'all ass respectfully who the fuck is robert glasper i gotta get my skills up i'm gonna start playing the harmonica so christopher was rightfully dragged (laughs) rightfully dragged because it's really crazy that you're asking who the fuck is robert glasper while also googling robert glasper because the answer is right there on, it's in your screenshot. But also, if you just keep looking, if you read the Wikipedia even, you'll see that he's been nominated fewer times than you have and yet has won more Grammys. You'll see that he has worked with lots of incredible artists. You probably also see that he was at your 18th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> it is just... You would see that Black Radio was the first album in history to debut in the top 10 of four different genre charts simultaneously. Robert Glasper is nobody to fucking play with. You know who Robert Glasper is, Saweetie? Robert Glasper is a musician. That's something you're not. Robert Glasper actually creates music. You hop on a track and do your best. For you to be clowning Robert Glasper to turn it into this whole thing. You know who Robert Glasper is? He's the nigga you need to call when you're ready for your music to grow up. That's who he is. Just take a just take a short little stroll down Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music. I'm sure they all have like these best of playlists or whatever. You don't even have to download his whole ass albums. This coming from Chris Brown, 
somebody who put out a, an album called It's Giving Christmas. You put out an album called It's Giving Christmas and you're asking who the fuck somebody else is? Robert Glasper is somebody who deserves to be there. Somebody who deserved the win. So, of course, he got torn the fuck up. He then DM'd, I guess this was a DM, this apology to Robert Glasper. I who, wouldn't call it an apology. I wouldn't either. But I just love how even in the screenshot it says, follows you. So, like... There was just no need for this level of disrespect. But he wrote, congratulations, my brother. I would like to apologize if you took offense to my reaction at the Grammys. You were not the intended target. And I know I came off really rude and mean. After doing my research, I actually think you are amazing. The organization isn't doing us blacks our due diligence. You and I should never be in the same category. Two totally different vibes and genres. So from one black man to another, congratulations. Hope you're able to feed your family for life. God bless my G. You were never going to stop Robert Glasper's back, first of all. This whole hope you're able to feed your family for life. I know that man. I would have cried laughing. (laughs) I would have sent that to the group chat so fast. Like, look at this little dumb nigga. Where do I start with this? Where do I start? I know he was on the ground. Baby, I would like to apologize if you took offense to my reaction. First of all, not an apology. At all. Saying, I'm sorry if you felt a way. No, apologizing is when you take accountability and show remorse for your own actions, not for somebody else's feelings. I apologize that I got my stupid coked up ass on Instagram and decided to talk big shit about somebody (laughs) who actually can play a fucking instrument. That's my bad. (laughs) To, oh, maybe I'll pick up the harmonica. Well, maybe you goddamn should. Try it out. Because you keep getting What's older, but that? your music doesn't. Your music doesn't get any older. It doesn't mature. It doesn't get better, in my humble opinion. So, like I said, again, that's somebody you should call when you're ready to be a grown-up. But that's not even... He kept going. You were not the intended target. You posted... Who the fuck is Robert Glasper? What are you talking about? Words mean things, you stupid bitch. I'm absolutely the intended target when you said, who the fuck is Robert Glasper? Who else was the intended? Who do you think is the intended target in that sentence? The word fuck? (laughs) I don't understand. (laughs) What are you talking about? Child, I know Chris is a low reader. I know he is, but there is no excuse for this shit. (laughs) How could he have? What? After doing my research, I actually think you are amazing. Perhaps you should have done your research before you decided to get the whole of the internet involved. Drugs. I was a, it's got to be the cocaina. And then blaming it on the Grammys. The organization isn't doing us black sour due diligence. Don't, don't think that's what you mean there. Don't think that's it all. I don't think those words are at all. I don't think they mean I what you're trying to say at all. You and I should never be in the same category. I mean, I kind of agree. Kind of wish they would separate people who know what they're doing and have an appreciation, a love, a talent for the craft in one category and somebody else in another. Not to mention, I think you're way more pop than he is. Like, I think Robert Glasper belongs in the R&B category more than Chris Brown does, which I'm sure would blow his fucking mind. But I just felt like it was already so stupid. It was already so fucking dumb for you to come back. And and the worst part is that you took a screenshot of this, threw some light-skinned emojis up on it, and then posted it to your story like this made you look better. Robert Glassman didn't even post this apology. I think all he posted was, if you don't know who I am, like, find me on streaming, nigga. <laughs> but, like, uh, okay? Like, you acting like, and oh, God, and then Team Breezy. Coming out of fucking nowhere talking about, well, Chris, you know, this is rude, but Chris do have a point. No, the fuck he does not. Where? He does not. Please be serious. These The, the people saying that are the people who still believe that Chris Brown is on a Michael Jackson level of talent and ability. So that should have sailed. From you're dealing with a certain what? level of delusion. <laughs> the, uh, the award is for the music that that was released within a certain time frame. The song that y'all be pushing and dancing to and singing is from an album he released like four years ago. It's not even like a, like, and 
No. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I just thought that was so incredibly fucking stupid. Also, I would like to say to you, sorry, son of a bitches who were lucky enough to get pre-sale codes for this tour, bought your reasonably priced seats and now are turning around and selling upper level seats to this tour for $2,100 and up. Y'all deserve the worst that life has to offer. I get that there's like no perfect way of doing things as far as ticket sales are concerned. And even with all of this pre-sale and blah, 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 and hopefully you get in all this, like I get that most of this is done in an effort to make sure that actual fans get the tickets. But when you look on these reseller sites, there are tickets available right now, even though the general sale hasn't happened in pretty much every single section for every single city. And y'all are charging ridiculous ridiculous amounts of money for seats that I know didn't cost you more than $150 or $200. $2,100 for a seat in section 208 or whatever. You got me full circle fucked up. It's not happening. I am so sorry. I, I truly hope nobody pays that shit because it's a ridiculous amount of money that y'all are not even, tra- this is not even pit. This is not beehive. This is not VIP riser. These are shit seats. Y'all talking about $2,100. Okay, we'll see if that price stay the same as the actual date of the show gets closer. Bitch, I bet it the fuck won't. But regardless, why are you this shitty of a person? This is why I I know it's impractical, but there has to be a way for real fans to get access to these shows. Like, the people who, bitch, if I get these tickets, nothing but death could keep me from it. Hell no, I'm not reselling it because going to see this woman is going to be the highlight of my 2023. Like, the people who for whom Renaissance actually means something, the people who have watched Beyonce been a fan over the decades has seen the evolution and want to be part of this experience so bad. Like, that's who deserves it. The rest of you greedy, selfish, cold-hearted, lily liver-ass bitches, y'all just don't. Y'all deserve nothing good in life. And... One final thing I want to say, I hate to say something bad about a black girl, but I, and, you know, mild spoiler alert for um, Drag Race. Uh, Am I caught up? I'm pretty sure I'm caught up. Did you watch last week with Malaysia and, or, um, or did you see the Untucked where Malaysia got into it with uh, no. Lux Nora? Okay. Well, mild spoilers, I will just say they got into it and, Malaysia rightfully went off on Lux. And I mean, it would have been Mistress too, but I don't think Mistress was actually back there. I think she was up on the stage, but rightfully went off on Lux for the way that they, you know, the girls, it was one of those challenges where you pick like a genre of music and we're all writing lyrics to this song. And so the girls were fighting over country versus hip hop or whatever. And Lux and Mistress were being such catty bitches about it like not trying to like act like they are part of a team or part of an ensemble cast but just being like oh well our group is taking hip-hop so you know good luck with country or whatever but this is ours like bitch no if we want it and y'all want it then we're gonna have to come up with something else you don't get to just claim it but they can't be like oh no it's ours i don't know what you guys are gonna do like (laughs) but this is ours blah blah blah, da 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 and just like being assholes about it and so malaysia called them out and called it bullying and was like, I really didn't appreciate how y'all felt like y'all was just going to come in and steamroll over us. Like our opinion don't matter or what we have to say don't matter. And Lux was like, well, I just don't like that word bullying. I feel like that's not bullying. I'm I'm the victim of bullying and I would never do that. And I'm like, I don't even think it necessarily has to be classified as bullying. But for you to act like y'all didn't do nothing wrong or nothing off putting or nothing upsetting. That's what I don't get. Because like you were definitely being a bitch. And so what I don't understand is why you didn't just stand up in that. And be like, yeah, we were being cocky. We were being assholes. We were acting like we own this bitch and we've already won and all that. And, you know, the battery was in our backs and we said it. And no, ultimately we didn't get it, but I'm safe. You're safe. So glad it all worked out, girl. Instead of this whole, oh, no, I didn't do that. Mm, No, I'm not like that. Like, no, you are. You did. So stand up in it. (sighs) 
That's my whole mm-hmm. thing about it. I'm not necessarily against catty, shitty, bitchy behavior, especially on Drag Race. But don't act like that's not what you did. When we, like, girl, we just sat here and watched you do it over and over repeatedly. So it's so, so Sasha Kobe is over here like, no, I don't know who, who do y'all think y'all are talking to? Like, you don't get to just declare something and we'll be like, oh, well, since Lux said it, I guess we'll just roll over and like, no, girl, you were being a bitch, a hard headed bitch. So claim it. And that's it for me. I am now done. I guess I got to catch up on Untucked. Yeah, you do. You got to catch up. Make sure you're watching Untucked because <laughs> you're only getting half the story, if not. But I knew you were going to say that. You did. That is going to wrap up this week's episode of The Read. Check us out on social media at This Is The Read. Our website, this is the read.com. Shop The Read for our uh, <laughs> merch. Patreon.com slash the read for our Patreon. Um, I think the voting has closed or is about to close for the NAACP thing. So thank you so much to everybody who did vote for us. Um, and thank you again to the NAACP for the nomination. Um, I'm trying to think. Anything else? Um, no. I went to the uh nominee luncheon this past weekend. Oh it yes. Very, How was that? It was cute. My imposter syndrome was killing me. There was a lot of really um admirable people in the room. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um it was Tabitha Brown's birthday. Oh, how fun. Everybody did vegan cake. She was cute. And um Brandy Evans. Miss Mercedes, the Mercedes experience, actor, dancer, all around badass. Mm. So nice. Very like out of your way. Nice. How nice. I just wanted to say that. Very nice individual. God bless her. Yeah. That's it. I'm done. Miss P Valley. I, I just could not justify going to LA twice in a month, but you know, that's fair. (laughs) I wanted to be there. Looked, looked fun, but you know, I'll see you guys in a few weeks. I got our little certificate. Oh, I can't wait to take a picture and send it to me. So, but yeah, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of the show. Take care of yourselves, hoes, and we will see y'all next week. 